Oh, I have outdone myself with this one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is by far, by far, the worst car I have ever purchased. Feast your eyes upon this. <laughs> this majestic beast, ladies and gentlemen, is a 2002 Audi A6 Avant with the uh, 2.5 litre V6 diesel engine. But what I really love about this particular one is that there's that famous Audi word, Quattro. We've got the Quattro four wheel drive system on this car and it's a six speed manual to boot. Let's just say that this car was an impulse purchase. So I saw this come up on eBay. It was a buy it now kind of deal. So I sent the guy a couple of messages, you know, what's wrong with it? Uh, you know, does it does it work? <laughs> is, is, there, is there anything you can tell me about this? Because I kid you not, well, this is, this is the description. I'll show you the eBay listing right now. So 500 pound, buy it now. This is the description. Audi A6 C5 Estate, condition is used. Collection in person only. If you know me, you know I'm into my early 2000s cars, my 90s cars, and I particularly love estates. And I just had to have it, so I obviously did the right thing, uh, hit buy it now and just purchased it. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, is a bit mental, but hey-ho, it's here now. And so I don't know really anything about this car, apart from those couple of stats that I just gave you. I mean, I've looked up the MOT history online the most recent mot ran out in uh january 2001 uh, and then it just lapsed i don't think you, the previous owner didn't try to mot it again he just he must have just parked it up let's uh let's do an hbi check on it real quick now and uh we can see if i've i've made a serious error <laughs> so i'm going to use car vertical to do this check amazingly i think this is actually hbi clear so we've got no mileage fraud was disclosed by the report. This vehicle is not wanted as stolen. There is no data about this vehicle being damaged and not recorded as having outstanding finance. That's really great news actually. <laughs> I'm really quite pleased with that. So we've got the failed MOTs. So you can see all the other categories here that it's been checked with. So it hasn't been used as a police vehicle or as public transport or as a taxi. Stolen vehicle check was checked in all of these countries. Uh, and the thing I'm, I'm, I'm most pleased about is the fact that the mileage all seems to line up. So this is all great news. And I think it's well worth just quickly showing you what a report looks like when there's actually an issue with the car. So this is for a BMW 5 Series. Uh, and if you scroll down here, you can see straight away accidents. This vehicle was damaged. And so if I scroll down to the damage section, you can see that it's actually a category S write-off, which is something that you absolutely are gonna wanna know if you're buying a new car. Unless of course, you know, you're one of these salvage YouTube channels and uh, you're gonna repair a crash damaged car. And what's really cool actually is if you keep scrolling down, you can see photos of the damage of the car, which is really important. So you can see this one's had quite a bit of uh, front end damage there. You know, there'd be nothing worse than buying this uh, M5 <laughs> and not realizing that this car had been written off as a category S. I mean, that's quite bad, look at that. So massive shout out to Car Vertical for sponsoring this video. If you use the link in the description below, you can get yourself 10% off an HPI check like you've just seen a full report. Thank me later. So yeah, this car doesn't have an MOT right now. This is not MOT'd and it is also sawn. So I think the best thing to do is probably just, let's just have a look around the outside to begin with and just take it from there. I've only had a really, really quick glance at this car myself since it came off of the trailer. Um, and I, I just kind of parked it up here and you know, I'm seeing a lot of this in the daytime now with with you guys for the first time so i mean first things first these headlights <laughs> i mean i can't imagine they're gonna get through an mot i mean you can't you can hardly see through them that's not good so but the the bodywork down here on the bumper i mean yeah that's okay we've got some kind of horrendous stabbing kind of holding thing there but 
that's not bad. But things get a little bit worse as we move around here. There is quite a bit of rust on this front wing. So, I mean, if you come down here, you can see that that's not particularly good. So we've got this, but, but you know, I'm pretty sure this would just buff out. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> right. Okay, well. <laughs> that definitely buff out. <laughs> Bit of G3, just bridge the gap a bit, no? With a, with a buffer. Oh dear. I should probably stop doing this. Oh my days, look at this. Oh my God. Oh, it's awful. Oh, it just keeps going. Oh, it's horrendous. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, it's bad, ladies and gents. It is bad. Same story down here. So, uh, luckily, I think the other side is actually a lot better than that. Oh, no, 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 it's actually worse. It's actually worse. Uh, I haven't done this. This is how it's turned up. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen wings quite so rotten. Look at this. And that comes all the way around there, around the top. There's another, oh, oh, it's crunchy. It is crunchy. Look at that. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. Right, so yeah, the front wings could probably do with a little bit of attention to say the least. So if we move down the doors, we've got some rust down there on the door, but that's actually quite solid, so that's fine. There's no dents or anything down this side, so the bodywork's actually pretty straight. We've got, we've got some more rust there, but that's just surface rust. This is coming off, there's a bit of rust down there, but it's not too bad, that's just dirt that you can see falling out of there. It's just surface rust, a bit more surface rust there, but it's actually solid. Yeah, no dents or anything. I mean, the paint is incredibly faded. I don't know how well this is picking it out, but it's that kind of very weird, bluey kind of purpley color that Audi did. I mean, there's some quite fantastic blemishing of the paint here, but I think some of this like genuinely will come out with a good buff. Um, look at the roof. The roof doesn't look too bad at all. I mean, I think these are actually known for rusting down in these roof rail parts. I mean, let's go around the other side and have a look. Oh yeah, hello. There we go, there's rust. Rust, solid though, it's a bit of bubbling. Rust. Yeah, so this driver's side got it a lot worse than the passenger side somehow. Uh, and then down this side, same story again, I'm not seeing any dents. I'm seeing some scratches and stuff, but a lot of this will polish out. Oh, there's a bit of hot, bit of a hole there in the, uh, in the door mirror. Uh, oh no, hello, there's a nice dent. Oh, and that, that's kind of folded around a bit. I've got a dent there. Again, we've got some surface rust, but that's all pretty solid. So that's not too bad. Right, I'll tell you what, let's, um, let me pull it out a bit. Let's, let's just drive it forward. See if I can get it started and then uh, we'll take a look at the back. Also, I've got to say, I actually, I quite like these wheels that are on it, a 17 inch. I'm not sure I've ever actually seen this design before. And they're all in okay condition, to be honest with you. There's a bit of some surface blemishes to them, but like, they haven't been like curved really badly or anything. There's a bit of paint peeling off there. You know, they could probably just have a nice little refurb, to be honest, and they'll be good as new. All right, so inside we've got what looks like they did to all of these Audis. I'm not sure how it happened, but this isn't black in case that's what it looks like on camera. This is blue. It's very much the same color 
as the outside and it's not just the seats that are blue the steering wheel's blue the center console there's blue the dashboard the entire dash is blue door cards are blue <laughs> everything's blue very very kind of late 90s early noughties in here we've got an audi symphony stereo system with a tape player most importantly i'm gonna have to get some tapes so this is actually uh, the bose sound system so that's quite cool um that's obviously not a great sign that must be off of the boot i haven't even looked at the back of this car yet but that's just sitting there so that's cool what have we got here what's that a locking wheel nut great a uh, couple of blade fuses in there so that's also a great sign We've got this part here that's just falling in. Okay, great. Oh, it's very sticky. Put that there. Oh. We've got a centre armrest with nothing in there. We've got the smokers pack and I can tell you right now, this car has been smoked in. Oh, I didn't notice that when I got it. The front window switches have been taped up and that's been taped up too so that's cool we're definitely going to have some electric window issues so let's see if we can get us started no lights on the dash actually that's not what i expected 125,000 miles which i suppose for one of these cars is fairly low mileage Let's crank it over, see what happens. Uh-oh. Nada. Oh, that battery's going, isn't it? Come on. Get going. <sighs> okay, I'm going to need to charge the battery now, aren't I? Which is just... Fantastic. Definitely wanted to be doing that in the middle of a video. So I suppose, you know, while we're in here, that, oh, hello. What's this? That looks like something out of the engine bay, doesn't it? I think that's the bit at the front, goes at the front by the windscreen here in the engine bay. So that's obviously not a good sign. Someone's been fiddling around in the engine. Um, the interior is actually in pretty good nick though none of, the, none of the leather looks ripped or torn or particularly worn so that's good uh, and like i said yeah this has got six speed manual gearbox and you know that's quite cool you know coupled with the quattro system actually let's take a look in here oh okay so we've actually got a service history this is good so the very first service was at thirty thousand miles in 2004 and it's delivery inspection in 2002. So Shrewsbury. So this is actually from Shrewsbury. Do you say Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury? I never know. Shrewsbury. Um, so maybe this car lived its whole life in Shrewsbury. I mean, I'd be amazed if it was a one-owner car. I haven't got the logbook yet, so I, I don't actually know how many owners this has had. Work carried out, long life service. Okay, cool. So another one, 2006, then 2008. So it looks like it's had a service every two years the last service recorded in the book was 2016 so this hasn't had a service maybe in six years great that was at 100 109,000 miles as well so the car's now got 125 so it's probably safe to say this car is due a service before I go and charge the battery, let's just pop the bonnet now and have a look. If I knew where the release catch was. Oh, damn it. That's where that bit that was in the car goes at the top there. So someone has been in there. It's, uh, it's a bit minging in here, to be honest. That's the uh, cabin filter, no? <laughs> Just kind of all nice and open and exposed to the elements. Surely there's supposed to be some kind of cover on there. But I mean, it's all here. How do you take these off? Oh, we got, oh, oh, oh. Right, well that's pretty minging. 
So this engine is supposed to put out 180 brake horsepower. I can tell you right now, this car does not have 180 brake horsepower. So when we took it off the trailer and I drove it in, you put your foot down and when I say nothing happens, I really do mean nothing happens. It feels naturally aspirated. So I'm thinking maybe, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know. You know that I know, and I know that you know that we all know that I don't know what that necessarily means, but it could be that the turbo has gone. Uh, and that's why it's been parked up, I imagine. So I'm gonna have to have a look at it because I can tell you right now, the only things that I know about diesel cars are that one, they don't take petrol. Two, they don't have spark plugs. I know, mad, but I'm just a messenger, you know. Don't have a go at me. I didn't design diesel cars. That's just the way they work. They don't have spark plugs. This is gonna push my skills again. And don't forget, that's why I do all of this. I'm not, I'm not in this for the money. This car is not gonna make me any money whatsoever. This, is, this car is the epitome of not economically viable. I really should put that on a t-shirt. So, I mean, it is absolutely minging in here that i mean there's so much dirt built up on the cylinder heads there we've got some cable in here with this outer protective sheath oh, i don't know has that been chewed or is that it's just it's been it's been torn none of that none of the actual cabling underneath the actual sheathing for the cable in there looks damaged so that shouldn't be too bad i mean everything everything looks in place to be honest with you um there's something maybe leaking in there i don't know what that is so there are probably a few of you sitting there thinking yeah why would you buy this car it doesn't it doesn't make any sense and the, the main reason in the short term is that well i want to learn how to fix it secondly this i want this to just be a really cheap load lugger for me because as you've seen in some of my previous videos i've had real issues like getting car parts transported around everywhere you know so i bought a couple of fiat 500 doors and i had to get those shipped to me i couldn't go to a scrap yard and look at them because i didn't have a car that was big enough to actually get the door in none of the doors would fit so i'm hoping now that because this has a rather cavernous boot we will look in there in a minute you know i'm actually going to be able to go out and about now and you know put a load of stuff in the back of this and you know not really worry about damaging it because it's already damaged it's already quite rotten so i'm actually so i've actually got this car for you know practical purposes but there is another reason that i've got this car now lots of you might not know this but in one of my very early videos i bought another audi a6 c5 like this but the saloon version and it's the 4.2 liter v8 and i still own that car it's in storage and i have plans for that car and those plans for the v8 version involve this car that's all I'm going to say at this point. I'm going, to, I'm going to let the more creative of you work out what I'm going to do. But in the short term, this is just going to be a really practical run around for me to go get dirty in, not have to worry about. And you know, I can just chuck stuff in the back of it, not worry at all about what happens to the bodywork or the interior really. All right, so I've got this on charge now. So this is actually the battery charger that was in the boot of the Merc when I bought that. Uh, and I had a Google of this and it actually brilliant charges so that Merc is just paying dividends <laughs> look at the state of this oh god that's just that's just bad that's bad okay so that battery should now be charged let's see what she has to say Oh, I didn't think she was going to go then. That is a rough start for sure. Okay, so... I mean, there's no kind of funny noises. I mean, these old diesels do sound more tractor-like than their modern counterparts, but... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't sound horrendous. Oh, actually, I think I can see the turbo just there. 
So actually, if it does need a new turbo, it doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to get to at least. If we come around to the back, we've got, well, that's, that's where the badge was then. That's that's in the car now. And, uh, you know, that's some pretty, pretty horrendous uh, paint scuff in there on a bumper. Whoa. <laughs> and he took my face off. Okay, so. <sighs> Never a good sign. We'll just pretend that I never even looked up there. I think that's probably the best thing to do. This car has been a work car for sure. This bit of carpet here is covered in all sorts of gunk. But we do have this, uh, we do have the load bay cover thing. That's the back there for the boot. And we also have this. Oh, sweet. What's under here? Is this covering anything? Oh no, it's actually just protecting, I think, what's underneath it. Oh, and that looks like a full-size alloy. Oh, nice. Okay. Right, let's put this back. I think we could probably do with a new wiper arm there, but yeah, no like crazy damage. So I think with this, oh, I might just do some budget repairs with a rattle can on that because I don't need to get it amazing because yeah, it's not amazing, is it? But okay, it's not in too bad a condition really then, I suppose body work wise, apart from those front wings. Um, I'm quite happy with this for a 500 pound car. Oh wow, I've just realized we've got electric seats height adjustable oh it works as well go on oh okay so i mean what could we do now on a diesel the glow plugs maybe i think that 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 never helps does it starting a diesel if the glow plugs are not very good right so i plugged in my scanner and i've just done a full system scan okay so we've got 18062 signal to b plus Please check DTC memory of instrument cluster. We've got 00542, lower adaptation limit, additive, not the needle lift sensor, G80. 00575, implausible signal, intake manifold pressure. 18058, malfunction in basic settings, da -da, something, something. 01375 pressure build up time at rear too long valves for engine mounting stage one all right so i'm just gonna have a quick google around and see what these fault codes for the engine might be about this error code i've got here which is uh p00542 needle lift sensor g80 now apparently that needle lift sensor is part of one of the injectors i think it's injector number three and it basically i think it measures the amount of fuel that's being sent from uh, the pump kind of to the injector and on these engines they're fairly notorious for going uh, and they can cause the symptoms that i've got which is like a drastic uh, reduction in power and lots of people saying you know they put their foot down and nothing happens nothing happens nothing happens nothing happens and they think oh well that's just you know how a turbo diesel can drive you know you've got a massive hole in the power band but it's it's, it's a much bigger hole it feels like a much bigger hole and, and and this this issue seems to be the one now the downside of this issue is that you basically you need to replace the whole injector and second hand one of those injectors on eBay is about 160 quid. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I think brand new, they're closer to 300 or something. Someone was just saying in a forum, I haven't actually checked yet with, with, uh, with Audi. So that's that. There is a way that I can quickly test it. Um, I can check for, uh, I can check the resistance uh, coming out of the connector. It's supposed to be about hundred ohms or something. We'll do that in a second. And then this other, this other code that we've got here that I wanted to look at, P00575, implausible signal intake manifold pressure. So according to this here, well, it can be a few things really, <laughs> mainly related to 
uh, solenoid valves for boost pressure control that seems to be about it turbocharger defective maybe so and then there's a special note it says it's not uncommon for a tdi to to set implausible airflow sensor faults and or boost pressure intake manifold and pressure faults when the engine performance is reduced due to excessive restrictions in the intake or exhaust systems so it might be that i'm getting that error as a result of something to do with this injector maybe it's there's, there's something in the intake or the measurements are off with the turbo it's causing that so i think the first port of call is i'm going to check this uh injector and you know it might this whole thing might be as simple as that this car may have been parked up because of that but maybe i'm just wishful thinking here okay so apparently it's uh this connector here is me testing the resistance there and I've got OL okay yeah all right well okay so that means that that needle lift sensor is broken this should be a hundred ohms of resistance and I'm just getting I'm getting over limit which means that it's kaput, apparently. So I think I've already found the issue of why this car was parked up. And I think it's due to that, that injector. I didn't think it was gonna be that easy trying to find the error here, or the issue with this car. I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't speak too soon, should I? Get off. That's not good. Cool, yep. Okay, cool, yep. Oh, okay, yep, cool, yep. Oh, no, there's more, no, okay, yep. Oh, okay, no, a little bit more, okay, cool. Oh, no, a massive great chunk there, okay, yep, cool, you go there. Right. So I think it's to do with the injector on this side, this far, I think that's injector three. I've got to find all this out. I've only had a, a cursory glance, but what I do know you need to do, so you need to remove this air box, remove the hose. You have to remove these uh, fuel pipes. Oh, what's that? I don't think that should be there, should it? Oh, that's one of the, boop, boop. That goes on there. Oh yeah, look, there's a couple missing. Sweet, right. Um, oh, there's another one there, look. Oh yeah, look. Sweet. Well, that goes on there. Um, so remove these pipes, take the airbox out, remove the rocker cover, and then basically install a new injector. Yeah, and then maybe that's maybe that's it. So yeah, my only concern is those injectors are fairly expensive, but I mean, 160 pounds. It's not. It's not the. Uh, it's not the end of the world for a second-hand one. Um, I don't really want to be put in too many brand spanking new uh, parts on this car because I don't I don't think I'm gonna use it for longer than six months I just kind of want to get it MOT'd and back on the road to be honest with you so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order one of those I'm probably just gonna buy a second hand one or whatever plonk that in and see if that just fixes it and if that then fixes the power issue I think what I'll do is I'm just going to take this straight to the MOT center and do what I normally do is I use the MOT to uh, basically tell me what else needs doing on the car rather than looking myself, which, uh, you know, requires way too much energy and effort if you ask me. Right, well, do me a favor. I'm now sorting out all of my Instagram and everything. I'm going back on Instagram proper. Give me a follow on there. This is my username. Um, I'm gonna, I'll keep people updated via there as well as obviously here on YouTube. And also don't forget to actually subscribe to this channel as well. You know, hit that like button and all that other stuff that people always say that you have to do. Uh, it does actually help me out. Uh, thank you ever so much and I'll see you in the next one.